Actually, now that you're rolling, we could actually like make a list of questions beforehand. to Boulder Ridge and so we're on the flanks of Mount Baker um, under the Boulder Glacier which is up that direction and there's a bunch of little residual snow fields like one behind me here and we came up here to collect snow algae that we can find living on these little patches of snow. Snow algae are photosynthetic microbes that live in the snow so when you see pink snow they're usually pink so when you see pink snow that is snow algae and it's not just one thing, usually it's a couple of different things. It's a couple of different photosynthetic algae as well as a bunch of bacteria, fungi, all living together in a community. So sometimes you look at the snow and you think you just see the white and the frozen water, but it's actually the whole community living there. As climate changes and we start to have less and less uh, perpetual annual snowpack here in Washington State, we're reducing the habitat for these microbial communities. And then there are snow algae found in snow fields across the globe. And I think that these microorganisms in their, in their communities, as they evolve and change to their changing habitat, and that's changing differently in different regions of the world, that we might be able to look at how things are, are manifesting across the globe and use that as a model for how communities adapt to changing climate. <laughs> we don't, there, there's a lot of really basic unanswered questions about snow algae and some of that stuff we hope to answer with our sampling this summer and then um, as we get some of the basic questions answered then we can start doing some really cool research. Well, I'm, I decided to start this project because I think snow algae are super fascinating. I mean all microbial communities are elaborate so whether you're like looking in soil or the ocean or fresh water, they all, there's always these interesting structures to the microbial communities. And in fact, snow is probably a little bit more simple than some of them, just because the algae community is pretty simple. It's hard for organisms to adapt to living in such extreme conditions. Because the snow in the nighttime is frozen, so it'll actually freeze overnight and then melt during the daytime. So these organisms have to withstand freeze-thaw cycles across a day. And so that's really challenging to adapt to that. So the actual diversity is fairly limited, but um, there are still multiple trophic levels. So we have the photosynthesizing algae, there's fungi associated with these communities, and then um, amoeba-like critter critters, which are small eukaryotes, and then also bacteria. Probably viruses too. The diversity of algae is, is relatively unsurveyed, so people have looked at stuff under the microscope and tried to describe what they see, but the morphology is really simple. Like the shapes and sizes of the cells are not very distinguishing. And so the kind of work that I've been doing over the last six years or so in the ocean, but looking at algae and identifying them using DNA sequencing is really perfect for being able to identify the sort of suites of diversity that we have within these snow algae communities. Nobody's done that before. Where'd it go? Meat. <laughs> Meat. Meat. Yes. <laughs>